Albert. Yes. Say something or else I'm going to start a conspiracy again. <laughs> Go ahead. Be my guest. I'm going to edit it out anyway. So. Ah. <laughs> It's gonna be like a two-minute show. Yeah, the king of king of censorship. Like, no, 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 you're not gonna say that. <laughs> you can say whatever you want, but it doesn't mean <laughs> that it's gonna end up in the show. Did you just fuck the intro up, Keith? He did, but I'm gonna yeah, fix it in did. post. Uh, very Don't good. Worry. Very good. Welcome to the. Work for your podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I still want to know how the intro got screwed up, but I guess we'll figure you, that out. It, it. it paused. Yeah, but now we have to leave it in there because otherwise listeners might get confused if I edit a perfect intro. No, don't do it. Just it was on. I'm going to keep Keith's fuck up in there for once. Yeah. Now look who's back. Matt is back. Yay. Where have you been? Yay. Where have you been? Where was I last week? Last week was, um, what did I have last week? Uh, oh, my wife went on a fucking vacation. I saw some pictures. So I was alone. But what does that have to do with you? I couldn't leave the house. Really, my wife's on vacation this week and I have not been home all week. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have kids that depend on you. Like, the, you don't have to wipe their butts. The, you don't have to feed them. You don't have to uh, take them to bed. Shit like that. I just gave him the keys to the car, said the car's yours for the week, mommy's not home. Nice. Very nice. So yeah, that's why I couldn't couldn't be there. And why were you late today? <laughs> oh, We've been shit. waiting for you. Oh my god. I was on uh on a very mediocre podcast for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> very mediocre. And you brought one of the one of your uh one of the hosts with you. Well yeah. He he got an invite from you and then I was like Fucking join. Do it. You told me no yeah, at so, first, though. Yeah, but, well, you don't take no for an answer, clearly. I do not. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ryan and I get, just like everybody else, really confused. with What What are we supposed Ryan to call you with the last name? Coakley. Ryan Chadbourne Knifeworks is my co company. Ryan Coakley is my first and last name. See, we just went over this on the other podcast, too. And then we were talking about me rebranding because I've been thinking about it. And you're making me want to do it even more. To the Coakley Doakley? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how it's so difficult for people to understand, but apparently I'm just a little smarter than the rest. I don't know. So what's the rebrand thought? What, what, what were your choices? I was thinking Coakley Blade Go is stuck in my head. I haven't made any decisions yet, but it's something I'm thinking about seriously yeah but i mean what 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 would be the positive aspects of rebranding right now at this point then i don't have to listen to it every time i go on a podcast <laughs> <laughs> and i my name is more geared towards like i feel like it's more geared towards custom orders and i'm not doing custom orders anymore and it's a mouthful want to change it away from custom orders and maybe the name is not a choice maybe uh, i don't know like one of your I don't knife know. models or, or something naming it naming and making up uh, brands and shit is, is a tough tough choice i could be overthinking it too just because like people get so confused but I, it would be weird if i was like no my name is ryan chadborn not ryan coakley because it's not i feel like that would be weird i think matt matt's this is kind of weird too matt how did you come up with yours why why do you think that's weird first of all like, why did you choose DIY Europe? It's a good name. Yeah, but why did you choose it? I don't know. It was a very did imminent chat decision. GGP it? No, 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 no. <laughs> there was no. I don't, was ChatGPT available back then? I don't even know. When did ChatGPT go live? No idea. I think it was slightly before uh, the AI came uh, came on. It was more like uh, because the kits are like do-it-yourself kits, I think, and it started with. Uh, with the revolutions no it makes yeah. it it's not a bad it's not bad i mean it makes sense but it doesn't um it doesn't like really narrow it down into what you were doing no because i had plans like 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 fucking brain do all the shit. about like yeah <laughs> to do like a lot of this shit and then it was like this only works for fucking grinders so yeah. and then i had the logo made and everything and i was like okay I'll just run with that it's too late no turning back yeah, that's why I haven't committed to anything yet, because it's a huge pain in the ass. 
mm-hmm. to to rebrand everything. Like all your stickers, your business cards, everything's yeah, fucking trash I, at that point. Like honest, honestly, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even do it. Why the fuck? You're already famous. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm already yeah, famous. Like, well, it's not going to help you with anything. Yeah. You're the first person to tell me not to do it. <laughs> because, like, okay, so whenever someone s- says your name, the only thing you always hear is, like, is it Coakley? Is it? That's, like, a thing. And that thing it's is also positive, thing, like, yeah. quite, yeah, it's also, like, huh? like attention. I never thought of it that way. No, you do. <laughs> it's, uh, I would, I would keep it like that. In my mind, I was like, oh, it's hard to remember. And that's the opposite of what you want. But maybe it's easy to remember because it's hard to remember. Yeah, because every time someone thinks of you, they're like, oh, what's his name again? Is it Coakley? Is it? So they know both. They they just don't know what it is, which is. It's kind of that way with Albert. Everybody's like. Andy Albert, is it Andy Albert? Andy yeah, but Albert. yeah, but <laughs> but that's but that's Matt's fault. That no, no no one else made the mistake before Matt started fucking around with that. So, uh, so what's everybody been up to this week? What are we working on? Oh, super secret project. Maybe you should go last. Matt. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but then let's ask our guest Ryan. What have you been working on last week? Uh, grinding, just. Yeah, I have, oh, let me count real quick, like 80-something, 80 83 knives on order, and 50 of them have to be done by mid-October. Fuck. Yeah, just grinding. What kind of knives? Uh, these They're like Southeast Asian bushcraft knives for the mm-hmm. batch of 50, mm-hmm. and they're 3 16th thick CPM 3V, 16 Fuck. inches long. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I tried to talk him out of CPM, but... But it's got to be a belt finish on there, right? Or yeah. Is... Okay. Yeah. Because you won't have the time to hand send like 50 plates, I suppose. Not of that steel, no. Yeah. <laughs> I hate I hate working with it. I really do. I know a lot of guys love CPM steels, but it's like it's like grinding diamond. Yeah. What, what makes it Southeast Asian? Is that the blade shape? Or... Yeah, the style. The name is something I can't remember, but it's like the guy that owns the company, like that's his... That's his deal. He sells Southeast Asian, Asian-ish type knives. But is it for a retailer or who are building the knives for? It's a website. Okay. Yeah. And he has like other models. This is just the first batch. And then as soon as this batch is out, we're going to do a, a smaller version with convex grinds. And uh, I told him CPM's not an option because of the price point he, he needs to hit. And yeah how do you make how do you make how do you make convex grinds uh the prototypes i sent him were the first ones i've ever done and i just did a slack belt i just moved my platen back mm. and did a slack belt and i mean it was kind of tricky because it was the first ones i've ever done but uh, i could see it being feasible for production work what about uh, leather platen do you have one i can make one i got plenty of leather i got some old scotch right belts i can use as a backing glue all that shit yeah. I also have a rotary platen too, so. Oh yeah, that's good yeah. for that as well. I, we touched I, on that on the last show, though. The, the experimentation time you have between batches and batch work is very small. So. Do you have the blanks laser cut or water jet cut, or do you do it all by yourself? Water jet is going to be down the road. I just have to be able to negotiate in the time frame. That's the hardest part because if you get a water jet quote and it's six weeks out, you're halfway through your deadline. Mm-hmm. before you even have the blades and that's that's a problem yeah um, so these ones i did with an angle grinder like a psycho <laughs> yeah. i have a plasma cutter too but the sparks scare the shit out of me because i don't have a water table mm-hmm. so do you have a um like a metal cutting bandsaw also or only angle grinder no i have two wood bandsaws but no metal cutting ones it's too slow you gotta try the handheld uh bandsaw and then just mount it to the wall with a small table it works great we have one at work and i tried to cut blanks out on it but it's just it's very slow in my mind whereas an angle grinder you just like zip 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 and yeah it stinks and it stinks you can yeah it burns the shit out of your sweatshirts and everything yeah yeah apron is a must with an angle grinder i'm wearing a sweatshirt right now with a hole in it right in that spot actually (laughs) Maritime maritime knife supply. <laughs> the hoodie? Yeah. No, his t-shirt's destroyed, though. It's got black epoxy all over it. It's fucking, yeah. Yeah. Come, come all over it. <laughs> <laughs> you just love cum, Matt. 
Matt's like it's a, it's so a he, joke now. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so infatuated with cum. Okay. What about your week, Keith? My week. No um, yeah, my week's like full of stuff that's gonna lead up into your week. So I was super busy this week, <laughs> getting supplies together and changing a bunch of shit on the website. One of the updates I just did for the website was uh, in Europe. It's really crazy with like all the different tax um, percentages for each country. So. Uh, I got it all set up so that you know, when somebody signs on, it automatically sees where they are and will change the tax rates for themselves. But now I have this problem for my business to business customers that they don't see the tax free price until they get to the checkout, which is a pain in the ass. Like coding and all the fucking website stuff is crazy, but I'm not going to pay somebody thousands of dollars to fix it. I'll figure it out myself somehow. So fucking cheap ass. Countless hours of that. Yeah, but it, but it's helpful. It, you learn a shitload of stuff. And you get sidetracked and learn all the stuff that you didn't know you needed to learn. And then you get back to what yeah. you're actually trying to fix. <laughs> it's all useful. <clears throat> um, and um, we had uh, Martin Huber on last week about the Knife Show Austria. And I got a nice message from one of our previous guests from, from Politic Blades that said, uh, after listening to that episode, he now signed up and he wanted to get into the cool kids corner. So I talked with... Uh, <laughs> I talked with uh, Martin, and Martin's going to set him up right next to you, Albert, next to the Salzburg tables. Oh, ah, nice. Be a cool little corner. Very nice. Cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So it'll be his first show. Yeah, it'll be his first show, though. So it's going to mm-hmm. be cool. When When is that show again? Uh, May 10th and 11th next year. Baltic Blades has some seriously clean work. Mm-hmm. Martin yeah. Martin is awesome. They both been on my show, and super cool dudes. Martin's a giant. Gentleman. Martin. Yep. He's like a teddy bear. <laughs> Yeah. So Matt, what, what's going on with your week? What are you doing? What are you up to? Shipping out a bunch of shit. <laughs> where, are sh- where are you shipping shit to? Shipping, shipping steel to Austria. What kinds of steel? Bunch of steel to Austria. Yeah, man. Bunch of revolutions and forges and oh, oh, house made gear. So you made some big sales, or <laughs> one big sale? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna <clears throat> um, move all the selling of the house made stuff over to some website in austria knife material.at right knife material.at yes yeah so this is one of the big project things we've been kind of hitting about in the show for a while and it's finally like starting to all come together it's been a project to get all the details worked out and where to find screws and washers and handles and all the bits and pieces for the grinders and the forges and all that shit but I will have all that stuff online soon, and uh, Matt's still gonna Matt's still gonna be doing the work in the background, putting everything together, and getting the laser work cut and all that shit. So I can't do all that and the handle material <clears throat> and all the other tools and shit that I do. It's just too much to do everything by yourself. Yep, and it matched perfectly with what I'm dealing with, so um, I don't have to deal with uh, with with every order anymore, and uh, it'll help you out substantially with uh, getting where you want to be. Yep. Yeah, it works out good for both of us. So are they not going to be on DIY Europe anymore? Nope. Ah. I think in the beginning it's going to link, uh, like it's going to divert to, to his website and then eventually it'll turn into maybe I'm going to keep it and like keep selling some stuff, but yeah, not, it's, good. it's not going to be what it, what it was. No. Cool. Yeah, so anybody in yeah. the EU looking for house made shit, find me or go to DIY and get diverted back to me. <laughs> it's basically going to be the same deal as I'm doing with uh with with the Gator Piss already, kind of kind of that type. And the Pelican Paste, right? Are you still working on that? Uh, oh yeah, well, it's it's like it's not on hold, but I I I didn't uh had the opportunity to get much much of that done. I need to get this out first and then We'll tackle that. Should we, um, we, we had a really good guest on last week. Should we play his ad again? Sure. Go ahead. WFI Europe is sponsored by Pelican Paste Premium Hardening Wax. 100% food safe and all natural, Pelican Paste is the best way to protect and enhance your blades. Whether you prefer hard wax, soft wax, or Pelican oil, they have it all. Also, check out their new shop hand salve and grit soap to keep your hands working as hard as you do. Go to pelicanpaste.com or check them out on social media for all your needs. Also, please note that no pelicans were harmed in the making of this product. Hey, I know that guy. Yeah, he sounds familiar. What yeah. a Tim. He's very professional. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah, we, we like asked all our listeners to 
sent in some of the ad reads and we were going to give away a piece of raindrop Damascus for the best ad read. And we got a lot, like some mediocre and some horrible ones. And he just, he just came on and did it in the first take and it was all done. <laughs> so we're going to have to send him some, some Damascus, I think. Hell yeah. That's Noah Bloomberg, by the way, my co-host on the Hustle and Grind podcast. Noah Bloomberg. Yeah, I don't know if I should say that because when he was on a couple episodes ago, he didn't mention me once. But no, you know. not a single time. He didn't even he didn't even think about it. Uh, uh, was that the episode that you screwed up, Keith? Yeah, it was. Okay, I didn't notice the screw up. He screwed up with the time, right? Ah, uh, yeah, like right. Six, six, yeah, yeah. six and uh, nine hours. Yeah, I don't know. You were half asleep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't remember that. Oh, you thought he was on my time zone. No, Noah's three hours behind me. Yeah. He's nine hours oh, for you guys. Now we know where the fault is. So it's actually yeah, Ryan's fault. You can blame me. I got broad shoulders. That's fine. Did Albert say what he was up to this week? No. Are you? Do you want to share? Sure. Not much. Um, <laughs> 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 no, we've been working on our shop and on restoring our power hammer. The 75, we built the motor mount. Everything looks good so far. Then we started a large, a large batch of steak knives again for Vienna, for the restaurant in Vienna. It's like 20, which we also have to deliver mid of October. Do you guys both work on them together or is it just one of you? No, now we it's... both work on, the, on them together. Yeah, because we do all the hand sanding um, together because that's a shitload of work. It's RWL34, which is a pain to hand sand. Yeah, so Andy and I are working on the steak knives together are those branded are those branded as the salzburg mesa schmied or no they're branded um mesa manufactur like the first batch or the first two batches were we already or i already delivered like two batches and that's the third batch and they have to be branded the same way but they're sold through our company so they're, mm. they're sold through the salzburg mesa schmied but they're branded mesa manufactur the old ones were why do they need are they selling to the customers too if they want one is it that why they need so many or people keep stealing? no they have a big um event <laughs> in october that's why they need so many of these now and they when i delivered the last batch i saw that five were missing because they showed me all the knives they had and i, I showed them again how to take care of the handles and stuff yeah. and i i saw that five were missing so actually five people stole knives or five knives were stolen already. So. <laughs> well, if I ever get to a restaurant and see like uh, one of your knives there, I'm probably going to steal it as well. <laughs> yeah, but it's a very fancy restaurant. So I was kind of surprised because it's a, I mean, it's the oh. it's a, it's a Ritz Carlton in Vienna. So you'd think that people <laughs> go there for dinner, have plenty of money to, to spend on knives, but yeah, five were missing. <laughs> Matt, me Damn. and you can go, uh, can, we can go before we hit up the uh, Knife Show Austria, we'll go get a steak. Yeah, steal as many yeah. as you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're, uh, we're not going to pay, pay for the dinner either. We're just going to really run out with a bunch of steak knives. <laughs> yeah, if that's you great. steal one of these steak knives, um, the dinner was free. So yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what okay. people thought. Uh, yeah. That was a big issue at the restaurants that I work with, was people the knives stealing. Are some, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Like, how can you stop that, though? It's... Okay, I have a business idea for that. Yeah. You got to you got to like spring load, you know, that once it gets out of a certain area, it'll fucking explode and with some ink like like you can ask the Israelis if they uh they put put some fucking charge <laughs> in it. The restaurant I work with made it their server's responsibility. So if if a knife went missing, they had to pay for it. Oh fuck. Mm, and okay. it pr it pretty much stopped it immediately. Yeah. That that can work, which is a bummer for me. But I, <laughs> yeah. I see what I see yeah. why. <laughs> yeah. And then we started building our new forge. For, I was gonna ask that. Are we allowed to talk about this? Yet? Yeah, but I was I was just when is this thing ever gonna be built? It's because almost, I'm I, it's almost done. Really? Yeah. Is it going good? Everything uh I'm I'm waiting for the top what's it called? The, the top big, plate. Yeah, the big plate. No, not the steel plate, but the, yeah. um, yeah, the brick, yeah. the top, the, the large bricks for the top oh, okay. of the forge. I'm, I'm, I ordered it today. Oh, is it like a brick? You're, you're using a, uh, a brick type thing? Yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's made of the, out of the same material like the uh, bricks okay. are, but it's a plate. Yeah. So yeah, I had to okay. order this one because it's large. It's larger yeah. than the bricks we have. I think Brian used a blanket type thing for it, like a softer Maybe, yeah. material. Baker cool. Forge used like a, a hard brick on top from what i oh, saw okay okay yeah. it's a ceramic mixture in the hard brick or something like that 
Ja, it's a, when what we bought is like a Shamot stone. Also Shamot is stein. It, the, the soft one or the hard one? The hard one. Ah, okay. Is, it, is that going to be like a heat sink? No, there's ceramic wool around it, so why would yeah, that? It should be, yeah, it should be good. Yeah. I've been fucking, my dad, not me, my dad has been fucking around with uh, the, the forge rubble. Do you know that? No. What's that? <clears throat> it's basically like ice cubes, but then made out of the hard, uh, like the stuff you make ah, the doors I off. Saw, yeah, I saw that on Brian's channel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it works pretty well. I have my forge is now like fully filled with that stuff and it, yeah, it works well. Mm -hmm. you get like more heat like 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 more surrounding your your blade or something your stuff that's in there yeah because it's open you know in between the get more surface area yeah ryan what are you using for a forge or a heat treat oven you don't forge i have a uh, even heat ko 27 say didn't forget it yeah shout out to even heat family owned company since 1948 even heat slash kiln.com 1948 was america a thing back then oh uh, yeah it was yes yeah 1776 bro <laughs> i know i'm actually fucking listening to audiobooks when about that right now about american history <clears throat> no just history in general oh like everything but obviously the the like the creation of america is a big part of that <laughs> yeah your history goes way deeper than ours though but we don't know that because you know we're american we just no. pay attention to ourselves. The the book is about the West, so you're part of the West. Yeah, but I love my even heat tap controller. <laughs> I control it from my phone. Really? So you, you you can turn it on? Yeah, you can heat it up before you go out in the shop. Yeah, nice. that's on the paid subscription for the app. But my shop's twelve feet away from my house, so I just walk out here and plug it in. Are they are they those guys your sponsors? Yeah, they sponsor the podcast. And you, and you don't get that subscription for free? It's through a different company. It's through who makes the controllers for them. Uh, SKS Industries, I believe. Help them. No clue. Yeah. What do you use for heat treating, Albert? And even heat. But we don't have the tap controller over here, which is a shame. It's got it's way more got features certified. than I... Yeah. yeah. You, it's There's a lot to it. It's got way more than I can ever understand. Yeah, but I, I don't think we, we can get it over here. Can we, Keith? Do you know that? The, the uh, tap no, controller? I, I, I don't know why. I'm guessing some kind of certification issues, but I think so too. Yeah. We only have the, the ramp master. What's it called? The the the, the previous controller. Mm -hmm. Who's selling them in Europe? Hobbyland.eu, an Italian company, and Art for You is dot se, a Swedish company. Hmm. Are they marketing them to knife makers or? Yeah, yeah, but they're very hard to get over here, and they're way more expensive than in the US. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe Keith wants to start selling heat treatment ovens. Oh come on! <laughs> what else? What else do I want me to do? I'm using the uh, from the Italian company. What's his name? Uh, Rock Blade. Rock Blade. Yeah. yeah. Pretty. I mean, for the for the money, it's pretty decent. The controls are really simple. It's just like the Chinese PID controller, but you just kind of manually set your temperature. And it's, I'm fine with that. Yeah, but if you compare this to, let's say, Ryan's um, even heat with tap control, I mean, that's that's ridiculous. The, the heat treatment ovens we have over here, right? I mean, yeah, mine calculates yeah, how much it costs me on my electric bill. Yeah. <laughs> I, so see, I see that at the end of the month. Yeah, I'd rather not know. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, mine tells me in real time. It's it's impressive how energy efficient it is compared to the homemade one I'd been using. So yeah. I mean, the homemade one, like, it, it practically glowed when I turned it on. I mean, the thing, like, made a buzzing sound, like, and just sucked the juice. Yeah, I don't understand quite, I mean, other than better insulation, how the, how you can improve the efficiency. I mean, if it's, like, two kilowatts or three kilowatts of power, uh, it's still three kilowatts, no matter how you fancy it up. I, I think it's because they run full blast 100% of the time, whereas my even heat will turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off like to optimize energy usage. So it'll heat the coils up, and then once it senses that the temp is starting to drop, it'll turn them back on. Like to get up to stainless temps, my even heat takes about an hour. My homemade oven would get up to stainless temps in about 20 minutes. Yeah, that's the same with mine. I have a homemade one that I did too, and it's it's quicker, but it doesn't mean that's the actual temperature. I mean, you haven't got the bricks and all the mass in there for the right, right. temperature yet. Yeah, I'll never go back. I, ga I gave my homemade one to another local maker who didn't have a heat treat oven i was like here don't if don't kill yourself so. that's the same with that's like the same with every homemade tool everybody in the beginning thinks they're going to save money and do something on their own until you like actually have a real tool 
and then you're like, I would never go back to that shit again. Yeah, it was a waste and of time. there was there's like a level of stress involved too, like because you have deadlines and shit. You're making a product, and even though it hadn't failed you, there was always a question of reliability in your mind. I think so. Like yeah. the the more bigger batches I did, I'm like, fuck, is is my oven gonna survive doing? 50 yeah right? yeah you're and, gonna be in real trouble if, if he if he fucking like dies on you yeah and that happened to me like seven months ago whatever february mid mid heat treat i blew a coil and so i had to pull the whole oven apart i'm like this you son of a bitch but i lost two days got it back together up and running met my deadline but still the stress is like unnecessary when you could just buy an even heat do you do you have two of them, like one for tempering or? No, I uh, I'll temper in my kitchen oven because I have a I have a split oven, so I have a small one on top, and it's pretty accurate. Like I put like you know freestanding thermometers in there, and it's it's pretty fucking accurate. Um, the even heat it takes too long to cool down because I have the wide brick one, so my walls yeah. are like three and a half inches thick, so it's uh it takes a bit to cool it down, so. I just use the house oven. I wouldn't mind getting their tempering oven though. They have a tempering oven now. It's less money, and it's stackable, so you can put it right on top of your other one. Still the same length and everything. Yeah, yeah. I think they offer whatever measurements they have for their specific kilns. They offer the tempering oven for it. Yeah, because you don't need all yeah. the extra insulation if you're if you're running low temps like that. But just for tempering. Yeah. How how much for the tempering oven? Do we know that, Ryan? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I can Google it. I got my phone right here. Give it a quick Goog. That's what I use my homemade one for now, but the homemade one's the tempering oven. I, it's, I don't know. I mean, it still will do heat treating temperatures, but it runs basically at like 170, 180. Mm-hmm. Like that for tempering. It's much more convenient than waiting for shit to cool down. Of course. Albert's got like three of them, right? <clears throat> no, we have two tempering ovens. And the giant what? one. Uh, heat treatment ovens we have plenty yeah. i mean we have we have two even heats a very large one for annealing damascus billets i mean it's like a meter long it's a top loader then we have the even heat for the normal one for um, hardening blades then we have an um what's it called efco i think for blades yeah. up to 30 centimeters and then we have a massive one for the one we needed for our, our repair we did on the ram on our um, the 100 kilo power hammer ram we had to weld but this one's massive but for 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 tempering we have two laboratory um, kilns which run very precise temperatures Ooh. so they have three depths they have 18 inch 22 and a half inch and 27 inch which is standard for them and it's the lt model but it doesn't give me a price motherfucker not so quick google how much is a heat treating oven like the one you have ryan in the u.s uh mine i got the i got like the ferrari mine's like fully loaded um i think retail mine would have been like 3800 mm-hmm. something okay. like that 3800 dollars yeah i don't know what that is for you guys but about the same approximately the same yeah but they do they make a um like uh, different voltage versions, right? What's the next one? Yeah, one, uh, 120 and 220. Mine's 220. Because my shop's already wired. Like, I I have, like, six 220-volt appliances out here, I guess is what you would call them. The tempering oven version of mine, so the 27, the big one, is two grand. All right, okay. Yeah, because I, I could get a controller for you, Albert, for 220, but it doesn't make sense when we have... Uh, when we have Stockstrom here, I don't know what the fuck it is, 480 or what? what is it? Yeah, I You run so, three-phase. Yeah. 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 It wouldn't make sense to run on, on two-phase here. No, the, the, the heat treating oven, we run. We are running on two-phase. Oh, you are? The even heat. Yeah, the, the, the one for hardening plates. Not the big ones, Yeah. obviously. But the, the other ones we are yeah. running on. I'll have, to, I'll have to bring a controller back with me when I come next time. Yeah, you should. That'd be awesome. In, how many you need? Like six? <laughs> One. We only have. <laughs> Do you need like twenty? We also have the even heat. What's it called? Twenty-two point five or something, for for hardening plates. And mm-hmm. that's what we need the um, better controller for. Not the other ones, but because you, we don't really need comp- complicated um, heat treating um, procedures 
when we do like annealing of Damascus billets. So that's a very simple program. What's the most complicated one you guys run on? Apex Ultra? No, not really. I mean, Apex Ultra is also very easy to anneal and grain refine. But our oven is running right now because we have to anneal RWI-34. And this takes like 20 hours or something <laughs> in total. So that's a bit more complicated, the program, because you have to hold it at 910 degrees Celsius for two hours, and then you have to cool it down to like 700 um, with a cooling rate of 15 degrees Celsius per hour. And then you have to hold it for two additional hours, and then you have to slowly cool it down to room temperature. That's the program we're running right now, because we had the um, steak knife blanks laser cut, and it work hardens around where it's been around the area where yeah. it's been laser cut. So we have to anneal it. And that's what's running right now in our shop, the program. Well, that's what that little price calculation thing that Ryan's oven does would come in handy. Yeah. If you don't screw yourself over. On. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah, it logs your uh, runs too. So you can just go into the run log and add them all up. Oh, nice. Yeah, maybe Keith can bring one of these controllers back from the US. I wonder how Try. much just the controller is. Probably a couple hundred bones. Yeah, maybe even more. Could be a grand, don't you think? If the whole thing costs 3800 Yeah, because it's an upgrade option on their website when you order a kiln, because you can still get it with the Ramp Master. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't I don't remember. I don't know off the top of my head how much they cost. Matt, you alive out there? <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. I just don't have anything to say about fucking Even Eats. Yeah, but so so after... You give me all of your business. What, what are you gonna? What, what are you, what's your plans? What are you doing? I'm gonna be sipping, still working uh, on that. Sipping. You're just gonna uh, sit back and sip whiskey. Sip whiskey and on a on a white beach somewhere. No, I'm just gonna be. Well, I'm actually gonna be more busy with converting the rest of the products from from Housemade because there's a shit ton of products that, that are not even available here that you weren't able to get to before. Exactly. And um, I'll have way more time for that. My next business adventure is probably going to take take a lot of time also. So, yeah. What is that? Did you find anything yet? Or is that a secret? No, I'm working on something. Yeah. It's not out in the open yet. Well, I heard that he was going to make uh, like dicktrinkets.com or something. What? Dick what? <laughs> Dick trinkets. Oh, you heard about that, huh? <laughs> I yeah, tried Matt, to sell Matt. that idea to Matt a few weeks ago and he wasn't interested. It was going to be DIY... DIY Europe dick trinkets. I've already got, uh, we're going to be rolling out uh, by Valentine's Day, actually. And I've got some products made, prototyped. <laughs> Did I see one of those? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that That's goes on a awesome. light switch. Oh, Lord. Yep. Uh, people are definitely going to buy that. So I heard I mean, if, if somebody sent you a good idea for a product and you use it, they would get a free one. And I sent yep. you an awesome one a long time ago. I don't know if you remember it. It was called the clock and balls. It was like a, a, a clock and the ball swing back and forth. To keep the second time. <laughs> oh, I'll have to go back Lord. and find it. That's a good one. I, I just like the name. I made some cookie cutters and we'll call it like a bag of dicks. And you'll get like six different dick shaped cookie cutters, uh, earrings, Christmas ornaments, um, light switch covers that are Michelangelo's David statue. And then there's a, a penis that goes over the switch. So he has a dick. Yeah, that only works in America, though. The switches here are different. Oh, really? Yeah, because we don't have... It, it, if, if you guys haven't seen the American switch, what he's saying is like the, the switch itself like sticks up. And it, you, when yeah, you turn yeah. it on, it's up in the air. And when you turn it off, yeah. it's down. Yeah, that works it's like a toggle. That. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like a toggle switch. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. But They're we're awesome working way. on branding. Uh, Richie, my brother, is going to do the website and t shirt stickers, dick shaped mm. trinkets, no dildos. We're going to have to put a disclaimer on the website do not insert any do of this. Yeah, you definitely need yourself. That. Yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> stick this 3D printed dick up your ass. Oh, <laughs> uh, Lord. Because people are dumb. People are dumb, definitely. I like yeah. that you say, like, don't stick it up your ass because you know that probably females won't do this. It's just going to be guys trying to shove it up their assholes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you can you can put that disclaimer on there and just make it funny. And it's a disclaimer at the same time. And people like it, that's part of the sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but we got a logo worked out. I got some products prototyped. Yeah, it's, it, we're putting along. It's my million dollar idea. But you... You already own the website, though, right? Because I'd look yeah, it up we, and you, you can't get on. 
Yeah, it's not built nothing. yet, but I bought the domain name the day we came up with the idea, and that was over a year ago. And then life got in the way, knife making got in the way. Richie's a tattoo artist, so he's busy all the time. And uh, then we we revived it recently. <laughs> so you have to you have to tell us how much weed did you guys smoke when you came up with that idea? <laughs> there was some weed involved for sure. Uh, <laughs> um, we like to get obliterated before we do our podcast, and that idea came up on a podcast, and it was like, oh, you know, we could sell dick shaped Christmas ornaments, bro, and call it dick trinkets. And it was like, holy shit, we could. And it's, and yeah. Oh, yeah, that's going to sell, man. I, I think it really, if you market that right, <laughs> uh, yeah. fucking great. I, I thought about it and I've bought dick shaped little objects to fuck with my coworkers and shit before. Yeah. Like valve stem caps, um, <laughs> things to go on their antenna or their cars. Um, I put a driver is gay sticker on my coworker's business truck one time. Uh, we always just fuck with each other, and I thought it. I thought it would be a good idea. You no might vagina have, stuff though, because vaginas are gross. You might have Martin Huber as yeah. one of your best customers from Europe. <laughs> uh, I'm not good with CAD, and Richie isn't either. So I enlisted the help of another knife maker to make me some files for product ideas I had. One was a toothpaste cap that screws onto your toothpaste and toothpaste comes out the dick hole. Oh my fucking God. That's fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a bottle cap where you can put a straw in the pee hole for people who like <laughs> to drink out of straws. A catheter drink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you, can need those, to, you, you should, should also everything. make like one of those things that you can put on the back end of your cigarette. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. That's a good idea. There we go. For, for fancy ladies. I like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they used to do to keep the cigarette away from your face and off your hands. Yeah. And then then every time they, they smoke, they put a dick in their mouth. That's, that's great for like bachelorette parties and shit. <laughs> and, and then you can do like black ones and shit in all different colors. Yeah, my printer, I need different to shades. buy the spool holder, for, but it can do four different colors. I only have black on it right now, so everything I printed is black dicks. <laughs> uh, once you go black, you never go black. <laughs> you need a fucking wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good old dick stories. I like it. Yeah. So we're rolling out soon. So. You, you, what did you say? The release date was Valentine's Day? Yeah, that's when we planned on doing it. He said he wanted to do 90 days. And I was like, bro, we ain't going to do it in 90 days. Let's do Valentine's Day. So we might do an early drop of Christmas ornaments around Christmas to generate some money for filament and other machines i need a better laser uh we want to make our own t-shirts instead of so that way we can do them one at a time if we need to so there might be a random dick drop before valentine's day yeah maybe yeah <laughs> yeah my printer will take uh, fo- a like time lapse video of the prints too so i thought about doing a few of them and putting them on the dick trinkets instagram page that's a good idea like the countdown very, very timer, good. you can watch it grow in real time. Yeah, watch your dick grow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our buddy Austin, who we've talked about him, like, getting in on the business with us. And he's, like, a little open to it. He'd be the money guy because he's our rich friend. And uh, he was like, we should make uh, actual usable dick fishing lures and, like, yeah, do definitely. ads with us catching catching fish on like a bass lure that's shaped like a dick which like like some real like real time manners like out fishing you got to use the slang and everything <laughs> get your dick trinket <laughs> like <laughs> yes <I'm> bob <laughs> yeah oh, i'm already i mean if those would probably be out of brass so i'm already set up to work with any metal so that's no big deal yeah that will be fine yeah when, like when I was back in high school, there used to be a company who made truck nuts. Have you ever heard of that before, Ryan? Yeah, that that guy made a mil- millions. Yeah, just he only made one product. 
it was like a pair of nuts. You could get it in, in three different colors, and it just clipped over the the, um, the trailer hitch on the back of your car. So when you're driving around, these the big ball sack was hanging and sweat, swaying back and forth while you're driving. I still see them everywhere all the time. They were like twenty bucks a, for a pair. Yep. They make them for Crocs now, so you can snap them onto the back of your Crocs <laughs> and have a ball sack hanging off your Crocs. They make everything. They, they make, like, flashlights that go on your Crocs, all kinds of shit. <laughs> yeah. We're literally living in idiocracy. It's kind of entertaining. Have you ever seen it that is. movie? Which one? I have, yeah. I- idiocracy. No. Oh, you should watch it. Especially you, Matt. You should definitely watch it. Yeah, you'll Maybe like I saw it. I don't know. I just want to... I'm so jealous that you're in America right now and I'm not because uh, I want to go see the Am I Racist documentary. Why Did can't you, you watch it there? It's not in theaters here. Uh, is that Matt Walsh? Yeah. Yeah. He's my fucking hero. <laughs> I fucking love that guy. I can't... Uh, he's pretty controversial, I guess, but I don't know. Is that the guy who did Unsolved Mysteries? No, he... No, he did uh, a ones, a ones about the fucking trans madness. And now, uh, what was it called? What is a woman? Uh, yeah, what is oh, a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, look that up. If you haven't seen it, go fucking see it. Go see that. It's whatever That's you the, want. State, the, sta- the state of the, the world right now. And then he made like one about the fucking race. Uh, what, what, what's it called? Critical race theory or something? Yeah. Oh, it's just awful. <laughs> I like the way he's approaching it, like with satire and stuff. He, but actually, he's not making it like any funnier than it. Uh, how do I say that? It's not like he's making fun of them. He just does you don't, whatever you they don't say. Have to try hard. Exactly. <laughs> and they just make a mockery out of themselves. It's just, <laughs> it's, just it's so good. I want to see it very bad, very badly. Pirate it. Crazy, crazy people. But there are there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of good people here too. And we got a few of them that are on our patron. Let's should we uh, read them out? Of course. All right. We got a uh, new patron at the end here. We'll list them off. We got Christoph Stiegler from Kanji Knives, Sven from Nord Artesian, Johan Fagelin from Fagelin Bladesmith, Travis Haynes from Bird Forge, Roy Rutten, Shay Dachant. Paul Balletta from Balletta Handmade, Mr. Coy Baker from Baker Forge and Tool, Pin Von Delf from Von Delf Woods, Alex Greenaway, one of our top supporters from Trenton Knives, Cardoso Knives, Bob Workman from The Shoe Shed, Richard Schultz, Mr. Fingal Ferguson, Oliver Tobin from Tobin Machines, Cochrane Knives, um, Jan Bicker, and Luke Johnson from Crafty Man Forge. So. Thanks, everybody, for supporting. If you guys want to help support the podcast, you can find us on WFIEuropePodcast.com. <clears throat> so Shout out Ryan, to Luke Johnson. Shout out yeah, to why said, are you not a patron? Why am I not a patron? Exactly. The second oh. time on the, show, on the show, you should be a patron by now. I have to pay you money to come on your show? Of course. I pay you money. <laughs> you do? <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> Hold on. I'm pulling it up right now. Shit, I want to know. <laughs> I was. I think. I don't know. Yeah, it's Matt Bicker. Fuck your Patreon. Pa. Whatever oh, that's right. You are. Son of a bitch. See? All right. Hold on. <laughs> right. Yeah. Ryan. What? Ryan, so you just do the, uh, you join any of the Patreon people you like, and you write it off uh, on your taxes as advertisement. So get some cash back. Oh, that's true. Because they name you off. Little tip for all of our supporters. What do you do with that? It's a tax write-off. It's it's like you you join the podcast, you're paying money, but they're it's advertisement. They're talking about you on the podcast every week. Oh yeah. For the two two dollars or whatever you spend. I don't know. I do, actually do, do, have no idea what I'm paying everyone. He just gives money out. <laughs> Your base tier says thanks for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> And I think, can you also see when I joined? Because that was before it was your podcast. Uh, no, Matt doesn't know yeah. what you're talking about, but that's our podcast, Patreon list. Matt, Hold on, I'm, you've never I'm giving back. you money right now, and then I can back up. There we go. Whoop. There. Now Matt can shut Ching. the fuck up. Thanks. <laughs> 
Oh, it just says you canceled. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Active. Uh, we have one new past, uh, Patreon podcast supporter, Ryan Chadbourne Coakley Knives. <laughs> It's n- that's not even what right? it says Gold on there. Knife God works. Damn. No, it's, it's <laughs> Ryan Chadbourne Knife Works. Jesus Christ. We'll put you in the you, show notes. You've been a member for 17 months, so I had taken the show over when you first started. No. Cause, yeah, it's been two years. The, I've you been sure? A, I've because been I was listening to when the other, when the other guy uh, was there. I'm literally looking at it right now, Matt. Okay. Damn Joined it. February 2022. And I've been on there for at least a year, two years, I, I'm guessing. Uh, you were one of the early ones, I'm pretty sure. I I was, was listening to you guys when, yeah, I can't even remember his name anymore, somebody in Bubba. Jason, yeah, Jason and Bubba, and Bubba, yeah. We've grown quite a bit since then. Oh, definitely. Way better. I mean, it was a fun listen, but it was not. Yeah, you're a member, you've been a member for 34 months, so oh, twice as long as Matt. Nice. So you're Actually, not doing it long. you were number two. No, technically you'd be number three because I was their first patron before I was ever on the show. And then Donnie Dulovich and then you. Donnie Dulovich was on there as well? Mm-hmm. Shout oh. out to Donnie D. Oh, you mean on the patron list? Yeah, on the patron list. Got it. So you want to bring back an old... uh an old skit, Matt. Anybody <laughs> piss you off this week? Anybody piss me off this week? Yeah, uh, you can't say it yet, though. What? I can't say it? First, I, first I got to play the music. Oh, okay. You ready? Yeah, of course. Welcome to Wanker of the Week. 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 Well, there you go. And he is the fucking Wanker of the Week. Because he wasn't there, and I had to come on that shitty podcast because he wasn't there. He was supposed so, to be there. Yeah, Honor Kegler, Wanker of the Week. Absolute fucking twat. Well, that just fucking tanked the whole skit because that's the same person you said every fucking time we did it in the past, so that didn't change anything. <laughs> well, well, it's actually, tr- like, this is actually true now. So oh, This time it was for real. Yeah, this week he had a reason. Yeah. Yeah. For, for once. No, it was Mason. It was Toby, right? Yeah, one, one of those two. Times. Was either Toby. Or... Look, if it's all the same, doesn't care. That's why we so, stopped. So, uh, I'll, 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 yeah, probably. I'll have another one. It's um, the U.S. Postal Service. Fuck them as well. <laughs> because uh, they've sent back a bunch of carbide plants for fuck's sake. They were in the U.S. and then they got. They didn't got. Like through some fucking x-ray thing or something. And they just send yeah. them all back, which is ridiculous. Like before you and get I a sent notice them in or anything. Fucking before I went to France. That was a while ago. And they, Yeah, and they got delivered back today. So, fuck them. I got one from the USPS also. Okay, see? Bunch of fucking my, assholes. My, my, my daughter uh, had a birthday uh, a few weeks ago, and my parents sent a birthday card. Um, because sometimes it takes a while to get shit from the U.S. to here. They sent it inside of another envelope and asked me to put some money in it for them, and it would pay me when they got here. And then I got a notice from the United States Postal Service that they couldn't ship it because they didn't know what the value was inside the envelope, and I would need to send them a detailed description with invoices for the contents of the envelope. So my daughter didn't get a birthday card because of that. It's just some fuckery, man. They, they, they it's just retarded, since, yeah. Like, has that gotten worse? Like, when did that happen to the U.S. where they got like this? Uh, was hmm. it 9-11? Shortly after. It was after. Yeah, I mean, that's when they... It all started yeah. with Obama. Really? Kind of. I mean, if you think about it. I thought, like, shit got really tight after 9-11. <clears throat> kind of, but... That. Immediately after 9-11, there was a wave of patriotism. And then yeah. we've gone the other direction from that now. Well, some of us. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm contemplating if I'm going to ask you or not. <laughs> Just ask it. What do you want to know? Do you think some terrorists did that? 
Oh, God. What? If 9 11 was an inside job? <laughs> yeah. Be honest. Uh, my honest opinion on it, maybe. But if it was an inside job, would I be surprised? Not at all. No, right? No. Like, we have some steel. Like, Albert, what is the temperature the steel melts or gets <laughs> soft enough? But yeah. a, but about the melting point of steel, Matt. I mm-hmm. mean, s- steel melts between fourteen hundred and fifty forty degrees Celsius, so one thousand five hundred and forty degrees Celsius. Mm-hmm. So but it doesn't have to, like to melt. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have to melt to get soft, right? Yeah. So, but then there's there's like a bunch of things that that just don't. It's the way I think it exploded. Then there's some new things that came out before it actually fucking happened. And some other building just magically disappeared as well. Yeah, I don't want to get into this. I just wanted to make the steel point. (laughs) (laughs) I do want to get into it. I know, but (laughs) that's not my kind of business. Oh, why not? It's just like if I ask you the question, like, do you think that some terrorists managed to pull that off? Yes, I do. Really, and then their passports magically, like they right before they flew into the fucking building, they chipped open the window and threw their passports out for the CIA to find. I'm not well informed <laughs> enough to, to verify this. I don't. It I is. don't have. It I is. don't have an. I don't have an opinion on that. I, I I'm not either, Albert. Research. Don't yeah. feel bad. I wasn't well, there. I was at yeah. art class in ninth grade. Well, Everyone knows where they was when that happened. That was huge for us, dude. For that for was, the whole world, yeah. I think obviously more for you guys, but yeah. You guys are more. I think you guys might be more desensitized to like wars being close to you, whereas like our homeland hadn't been touched since Pearl Harbor. And our homeland hasn't been t- like Pearl Harbor. When was that? Nineteen forty-one. Well, our homeland wasn't. Let's say like five, six years difference <laughs> for all of us. I think. And our homelands haven't been touched either. You're welcome. Oh, Lord. There he goes. <laughs> World police. <laughs> You're welcome, Mr. World Police. Yeah. <laughs> America. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> it's true. You know it's true. <laughs> yeah. Um. We big brother everybody, and it's not out of the kindness of our hearts. It's because it's big money and making weapons. Yeah. And the most average American would want us to get every single American soldier out of a foreign country because it's not like it used to be. You know, we used to get behind the wars and be like, yeah, yeah well, yeah. the last the last time people were behind it was because of those towers. I think, and after that, it was just... Yeah, and then we found out we were lied to. Yeah, exactly. And nothing happened to them. That's B- probably when the distrust of... The extreme distrust of our government came into play. Like, now we assume anything they say is a lie. Mm-hmm. Well, everything they say is a lie, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel fucking Elwood cringing. <laughs> I can too. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I mean, it is great knife talk. It is. Let's talk about knives. Starting out a subject because else I'm going to ramble again. That's a, gotta go back to this one. Anyway, to, but we can to try. which one? <laughs> it's gotta go back to this subject again. Anyway, but we can try and start a new topic. Whatever. I mean, they did use knives to take over the planes. That, I was I was thinking that for fuck's sake, <laughs> and I didn't say it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. I think they also used that knife to poke open the door and throw out the paper uh, ID cards right before they flew into the buildings. I don't know. The, even though I, I enjoy conspiracy theories, mm-hmm. I don't have the time to delve into them enough to be like, yes, this is, this is I without a doubt, believe this. You know what I mean? No. It's after, uh, after I read that book that I fucking went on a deep dive on on all those old things and it's just crazy and plus it's stressful it's like yeah it's i it is, don't know and, 
depending on like what you start looking at on the internet and the internet will just continuously uh, they won't show you stuff to support stuff like yeah they'll su- send you send you shit to support what you are what you keep reading and looking at so it only no, like they forces won't. whatever not direction if you're looking, you go in not if you're looking into anti-government things <laughs> they won't show and you then, that you have to you look have very hard time on your hands they won't i have a i have a kind of a crazy knife story that just happened to me today actually i was uh work i was working at a job site and we got some shit to eat from the place we were working at and just like three of us were sitting out sitting outside by our truck and this freaking car from i don't even know where it was from romania or something pulls up and they stop jam the brakes on backup and it comes over to us with a like five boxes of uh 10 set uh knife it was nine knives and a potato peeler and he's like how much do you want to pay me for this how much what, what's it worth for you guys and he opens the box to show us and we just talked about this like a few weeks ago about knives with coatings on them they were like some cheap ass uh black coating with like white splatters on it, it looked like white paint splatters or something so anyway he was trying to sell us knives and and he, then he started talking to me and i'm like no uh I don't need any knives. I make my own, and I had showed him a couple from the tr- from my work truck, and he just looked at him and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Six, it was yeah, a, a nine knives and a potato peeler, and he he went down from the first guy he was talking to. He started with like sixty. He wanted sixty euros. He went down to forty euros for nine knives and a potato peeler. So that I would buy that. Out. Yeah, <laughs> of course you would because you're cheap. <laughs> I that, would buy that. That's oh, like sure. that uh, that Forge and Fire knife set that you could get at Walmart. That's also fucking crazy. That they, <laughs> I couldn't believe they, they fucking that did shit that. Up. That was like the end of it right there. Who did that? The Forge and Fire. They had a fucking Chinese knife set that they sold at Walmart. <laughs> they were horrible. I was like, what the fuck? Dude. <laughs> it was like three knives great, for, man. I don't know what it was, 50 bucks or something, or 60 bucks for three knives. Forge and Fire branded. That's just like a complete slap in the face for the hosts and like everybody who's ever been on the show, right? It's, it's yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. When I saw it, I was like, "What are they doing?" You know, it was somebody, some bean counter in the company is just like, "Oh, you know what we could do? We could make, we could brand them onto cheap Chinese Taiwan fucking junk knives and sell them at every Walmart in the world, and idiots will buy it. They will." Because they had no idea how much of an insult that was to everybody. Who, yeah. If I was one of the hosts of the show, I would have bought that and then like used my own knife to like n- slam through it. Like you know, they do put a blade to I'd blade and in. hammer I'd, it in. I put that in the show. Yeah. No. I don't guy. think they have any control about what goes in the show. Uh, I think so either. No, I. I mean, we've interviewed all of them except for Doug Markita. And uh, it seems like they just pretty much go with the flow of what the producers say. Yeah, I'm sure they signed a whole bunch of shit where they're not allowed to do any of that or talk about anything bad. Yeah, I heard someone talk about that, I think. They asked someone on. I don't know who it was. Fucking Fader or something. Right? We've had Fader on. We've had... No, I uh, mean on Fortune Fire. Yeah, he was never on. No, no, he was never he was on, but they, I th- yeah, he was asked to be on, and he was said, like, I'm not doing that or something. There was some, something with signing shit or something, or not paying enough, I don't know. Yeah, it, his deal was that uh, he had to sign something that, to say that he couldn't, like, advertise his knives at all, so he couldn't wear, like, his own T-shirt or anything like that, and they wouldn't mention him except for his first name. So they don't, they don't really, like, push any of the makers. That was his deal. Yeah, the whole, I mean how the show operates is not really geared towards helping the makers. No. You know, I mean, you only get paid if you win. You got to take weeks off from your day job or shop or whatever. Um, the per diem is not very much from what I was told. It's yeah. And yeah. And even if, if you do win, if, and when the show is yeah, that's when you get paid. If they don't air it, you don't get paid. Which is also bullshit. That's fucking yeah. nuts. I mean, they're making millions off of that show. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody should get paid. They should promote everybody. Yeah. I mean, even if the first and second place, you get like 500 bucks for being the first one out and a thousand bucks for being second one out. You know what I mean? Like something. Mm -hmm. 
Give them something. They contributed to your product and your brand and are the reason why you even have a show. Like, give them some fucking crumbs, dude. Give them a little table scrap. Please, sir, I want some more. Please. (laughs) Just give them a fuck. Give them a little bit. Are we going to end this shit show now or are we going to keep going? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Please, Albert is like, please stop this before Matt starts about racism. Yeah. So, everybody, uh, dicktrickets.com, keep your eyes open. Coming to you in February, right? Yep. February. I'm definitely going to order some of it. If it goes Everybody's down. waiting for the for the for the drop for the testes to drop. Dicktrickets.com. <laughs> <laughs> gotta wait for the balls to drop. Oh yeah, gotta have uh, you, you gotta have uh, Brian House like made you like a swage block to, you know, you you can press out your own penises in steel. The gooch cooler or one of those penis cage thingies. <laughs> <laughs> I can make dick shaped coffee scoops. Oh damn! Yeah. And then and then you just gotta have Brian sell them because that'll work way better but then i have to give them a cut yeah well that's just circumcision like a, a, like <laughs> like yeah sell like 10 for yourself or like 2000 with brian house and then get a cut from that is better i don't know if house would want to be associated with dick trinkets.com he's a little bit more professional that. than i am probably i have no shame it's fine <laughs> but like Noah doesn't even like talking about it on the main show. <laughs> like he wants me to wait till the after show because he thinks it like negatively affects his business. Maybe. Noah's a good dude. We've been talking a lot. He is. We're a good mix. You can't have two guys that are exactly the same on the same show. It no. does. It's just no. boring. But he might be right. True. That not so great for your business thing. Yeah, I try not. I try not to. I try to be respectful about his wishes on it. You're a very nice guy for that. I guess. Not a total hedonist, hedonistic asshole. <laughs> All right. So if we got any listeners left at this point, <laughs> <laughs> th- thanks, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks, Ryan, for joining us. Matt, it was nice to see you again. Glad you showed up. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I think I think that's a wrap. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Thank ladies. you. All right. Bye. 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 Da na 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 na. Da na 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 na.